welcome. We are glad to uh, be looking at the fall planting. And Ben and I uh, will be talking about some of the things that you can look forward to doing. We have some plant examples. We'll be doing some actual planting. And what sort of plants will they be getting? Um, in the next couple weeks, you guys will be receiving a mix of herbs and greens. Um, things that will do well going into the, that can tolerate the heat that we have right now here in the middle of the summer, but then we'll be able to grow into the fall as our days get shorter and the nights get cooler. Um, you can also, if you choose to, purchase some herbs like oregano, rosemary, thyme, um, sage. Those are all perennial herbs and you could put those in the planters as well if you want to bring them in over the winter, which I know Ben has done a lot with his um, plants at his garden as well. Um, yeah, so you guys have done this before. We planted this exact same pot. We're using the same pot that we used in the spring um, for this fall planting. We've cleaned out the old plant material um, and we've taken a little bit of the fertilizer like we did in the summer and we mixed it in just into the top inch or two of the, of the surface. Now that we didn't have any plants in, we didn't have to be careful for their roots. Um, and we're, we've wetted it, so we're ready to plant. Uh, talk us through what we're going to do then. Okay, well we have we have some oregano, we have um, oh my gosh lavender this lavender this is beautiful and uh, we and aromatic yes oh my gosh if you want to impress your uh, friends and family that would be a thing to grow. Uh, we also have rosemary which is actually I think of rosemary with cream rings in my hair but it's also great in food but. Uh, <laughs> And then the last one, I'm to, is that thyme? This is thyme, yeah, this is a little overgrown. Um, we meant to plant it this spring and it just stayed on the greenhouse benches. So it, it went beyond thyme, right? Yeah. Oh, good. So let's, what would you like to plant first? I'm sorry. Well, we're doing, we got four um, perennial herbs here and I'm just thinking the kind of pick, picking four points of this. Yeah, splitting up into quadrants and giving each one a space. So. Um, I got some oregano here, and uh, let's stick it on this side. And oregano, it's one of those things that there's no wrong way to do it, and there is no one right way to do it. But we have two plants that are somewhat sprawling. We have um, oregano and thyme, so I'm thinking we should put those opposite from each other. And we have two plants that are more upright, which are rosemary and lavender, and then we'll put those opposite from each other as well. So you guys will be receiving a six pack of yours um, and you can choose how you want to space them out or put them, plant them someplace else if you want them as well. Thank you, Ben. So we're just, we're just, he dug a hole, I dropped it in, and he's just, he's just gently placing the soil around it so that it has good contact around on all the sides so the roots can easily get into it. We got our rosemary. The other thing I'd like to mention is that sometimes these plants will kind of get out of control and take over a garden space. So that's something, if you put it in your uh, regular garden, what else would you call it? Your outside garden, uh, it could spread. And so sometimes people will put it in, a, leave it in a pot, which it has an open bottom, so it will spread less easily. But mint, mint is notorious for that. I have a, we have a very, some very strict policies around mints here at the Food Innovation Center on where it's allowed to be planted and where it's not allowed to be planted. Right. And this is beautiful. And it smell, you will not believe the smell of this. But again, there are many different ways that you can plant your pot. And you can put in like lettuces or parsley. Um, what are the other crops that come to mind? There's going to be some turnip greens and collards that come in the mix as well. Um, we seeded some chives, we're not quite sure if they'll be ready or not in time um, to give to you, but they are also a perennial herb, so if they're not included in the mix we give you, but you really want them, um, feel free to, to find yourself a, a pot someplace else and stick it in just as well. It'll compete just fine. Um, and also, those are all cool weather crops, which yeah. is really nice too. Yeah, if you bring them inside, chives in particular will still die back in the winter time. They do go through a cold period. Um, they respond to those short days, but they'll come back again in the spring. So this looks like something I would do at home, that the plants are going to kind of sort themselves out as time goes on. If you're not happy with this ungroomed appearance, feel free to come in, give these all a haircut. 
by, for all of these perennial herbs, the way you harvest them is taking the ends of them, which causes them to kind of fill out, and you can harvest them selectively to push them the directions you want them to go. If I don't want them going to the middle, I'm gonna cut out all the middle plant material. If I don't want them to go into the outside, that's where I'll harvest instead. I'd like to add something, Ben, and, and maybe you can show us uh, an example, but I have a friend who's actually used rosemary in place of a Christmas tree, put it in a large pot, and it grows larger. Yeah, it gets bigger as time goes on, and we have some, some other examples too, so. Wow, this is obviously the sign of Ben, because these are really verdant, and really, but again, you can see how this could look like a Christmas tree and easily be decorated for the holidays. Uh, the holiday that comes to mind when I like do this and the smell is Thanksgiving. <laughs> Rosemary and chicken goes well. <laughs> even though I'm a vegan. <laughs> so this is a Thai chili pepper plant. Um, we started it from seed about four years ago. Um, we started them in four inch pots for planting outside. And then we took those, we had some left over and we just put them in a slightly larger container. They continued growing out. And now it's, we've been keeping it in the greenhouse for the past couple of years. Um, and over the past four years, it's grown effect into this relatively small tree. Peppers are a tropical perennial, so they, they die off in the winter here, but left to their own devices without a winter to break it up, they'll just continue growing. So this one here is, has already gotten quite big. I'm about six feet tall, so you can see it's kind of reached about as tall as me. If you look here, we have some other examples we'll show you in just a second so we don't break the focus. Um, but this is a Thai chili right here as well. So that's probably about nine feet tall now. So if you have some heated space that gets good light, you could grow yourself your own pepper tree as well. So, one of the things that you'll have to watch for is if you begin to see holes showing up in your leaves, the truth is your, your brassicas don't normally grow that way. And that probably means that you have a pest. So, if, I don't know if you'll be able to see right there, there's a little white dot, but that will be a cabbage loafer, loper worm. It will turn into a worm that will quickly double, triple, quadruple in size almost on a day hourly basis. And I'm trying to see if you, you may be able to see the little white butterflies flying around. And those are the mature cabbage loafers that have become big, big boys. So Ben and I are going to look for pests. Oh, and I also see some beneficial insects here, like a wasp that sometimes will feed on them, but Unfortunately, we don't have enough to control the, um, the plant being eaten, and this will accelerate rapidly. So we do have an example of, of a biological spray that you can use. Uh, ben had some BT in, in the office there, and we'll show you what you can do with that. So this is a green onion leaf here, and what we're seeing here are these white speckles along the leaf. This is caused by thrip, which is a tiny insect that has a rasping mouth part. So it scratches the, leaf, the surface of the leaf and then licks up the, the juice that comes up. Um, the surface, or the damage, is to the surface. This leaf is still plenty fine to eat, um, but it's not marketable because people wouldn't want to purchase this at the farmer's market or at a grocery store. Um, but if you see this in your own garden space, um, it can affect anything in the allium family. Um, onions, green onion, and garlic, chives. Um, don't be too alarmed. You can still eat it just fine. And the bugs are so small that I'm not even able to point them out to you. So, um, so keep that in mind if you are concerned about a couple of them getting through, you'll never even know that you ate them. Okay, so Histrina has been harvesting uh, collard leaves and we found a baby cabbage looper. And in like a couple of days, it will be five times that big. But if the wasp get to it before it hatches, it will parasitize the, the um, larva and it will end up looking like that and the little wasp will be inside eating the cabbage looper. From the inside out. From the inside out. And this might be a hole where it's the the wasp has climbed out, I'm not sure. But but yeah, that would be an example of one that's been pretty well done.